What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about Tupac is alive and the power of a false narrative in the minds of poor people. And once again, I isolate poor people because this is where you see this running rampant. You will have some people who are well off who will have uh, false narratives as well, but predominantly it is poor people who believe in false narratives and not only believe in them, even when they're shown proof that their narrative is false, they still cling to that belief. They still cling to that belief. So we we'll, we'll, want to talk about this. And first of all, we want to talk about Tupac. There are many people who still believe that Tupac Shakur is still alive. And this is people in the hoods, the ghetto, lower social economic class. They still believe that Tupac is alive. I've heard all types of conspiracy theories that Tupac is an angel and he was sent to earth to show us, to lead us the way. As Alan Roger Curry would say, I'm not going to do it. Insert dog face here. And it's really interesting what happens because the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm going to share something with you guys that I never really talk about. I have dissenters, I have haters, I have people who create these false narratives about me. And let's kind of go back to when I was in the car rental business because I'm no longer in the car rental business. And I had people after people talking about he is not paying cash for cars. I had one commenter who would double down and, you know, until I blocked her. It got, cause she not only left comments on this channel, which is the time was I was running those videos. No, no, no. She left comments on all of my channels. He's going to get off of that paying cash for cars. She said that over and over again on not one channel, but four channels. She doubled down on it. And I was just sitting there. I showed you the car titles. Proof. But once again, and I started to I did some research because I was like, there's got to be research on this because this is such a problematic area. And it's called the illusionary truth effect. You can Google it. It's the illusionary truth effect where a person believes in something that is false even when shown proof that it's not false. And I was just like, there is a, it's a psychological, because one of the things that is happening, um, as you guys know, I put up a video last October talking about I could have been a predator R. Kelly. And I had numerous people, once again, shout out to the nerd tribe, shout out to all the people who are leaving the well-constructed comments I've had people talk about that I was buying YouTube views. All right, so this is to welcome you guys to the Glendon Cameron School, the ultimate source for personal finance and business development and startups. So what we're starting with in the first mode is, let's go here, home economics. Home economics is the foundational educational course of extreme money management. So you can go ahead and get in there and we've got a lot of things coming. And this Sunday at 4 p.m. March 27th, we have our second live webinar. So go ahead, sign up today. The link is below because this is to prep you to be an entrepreneur in the future because one of the biggest issues that we have is people will make money and they'll get locked into a cycle. So there's a lot here that's going to be here. And it is my goal to get this finished before April. So go below, sign up for home economics. It is one of the most important money management courses you will ever take in your life. And I was buying comments. So all of you people who are leaving these well-constructive comments, Lay Paris, DSL Chronicles, uh, there, there's a bunch of folks here 
who are leaving comments of their own accord because they like the content. I am not buying YouTube views. I am not buying comments. And once again, and there was about 30 people, 30, who consistently posted on this channel, posted on the House of Pain, posted on Disruptive Mail, and they really didn't, because th this is what's so funny. Th this is gonna crack y'all up. Even though I say I have multiple channels, there are some people who don't know that I have multiple channels. So the people who come, and I got a question for you guys. These guys clearly don't like me, and that's cool. I'm not for everybody. But please put in the comments, why do you think these people stay subscribed to my channels? They clearly don't like me, but they're consistently stay subscribed to my channels. Um, this was a, a commenter who's been watching my videos, who, who was all on me from the, the, the incident in October, and he left a comment because I said something about another YouTuber, and he was like, why she got to be all that? And I'm like, why are you even watching this content? Why are you even still here? So please in the comments put, why do you think all of these dissenters and haters are just hanging around? For me, it, you know, if, if I'm watching, I'm on YouTube and someone's putting up content or as a YouTuber that I don't like, I don't watch them. It makes no sense to me. So please put in the comments why these people are hanging around and here's something else, and I'm, I want to share a theory with you. I feel, and I could be wrong, that these people are misplaced fans because they subscribe to every channel, they watch what I do, and they're waiting for that one video or that one 30 second sound bite where they can say something to Cindy. They're like waiting. They're just like a cheetah about to pounce on his prey, like, hiya, gotcha. And it's funny, but the illusionary truth effect, I feel is a psychological issue because I, I'm just sitting here, because like I said, I've been trying to understand, I've been trying to put it together. Why? And, and it, it gets deeper because there's uh, delusional people, there's the illusionary truth effect, there's delusionary people, and this is the predominance of the lower social economic class. And once again, and I'm about to go somewhere, so stick with me. Homeless people typically stay homeless because of mental illness. I was homeless. I did not stay homeless forever. I stayed homeless maybe two months and I got myself out of it. There are many people who are homeless, not because they are, they don't have resources, they have mental illness. There was a YouTuber that got this homeless guy a computer and taught him how to code. I can't remember his name. And the homeless guy learned how to code and the homeless guy got an apartment and he started to return back to mainstream life, right? Within three months to get in the apartment, the dude was homeless again. He, he knew how to code, he had a computer, he had help, but he was homeless. And it came out that he was mentally ill. So what I feel is that many of my haters, distractors, dissenters are mentally ill people. Just the other day, uh, I saw someone post a comment on Reddit about my China video. It, it will, it, it, I just deleted it because uh, I was sitting there. Like every time someone mentions me on the Google, I get an email. And this is what's funny. I didn't get a lot of emails during the October incident. I got an email the other day and it was just like, because they, they make sure to... I, I will give them credit. They make sure to spell my name correctly. They, you know, it's pretty easy to spell. But I was just sitting there like, because a lot of people go to Reddit and they try to start conversations about me. But Reddit is a really interesting place. Redditors are pretty territorial about Reddit and about their subreddits. 
And typically when someone goes to Reddit and starts a post about me, it typically goes nowhere, right? And I was just sitting there like, oh, okay, okay. And then um, I got another person or group of people who are, once again, subscribed to every channel, leaving comments on every channel. And they're, I, I'm just sitting there, they're saying things that are not true. They're not true. And they can be proven to not be true, but they double down on it. They double down on it. Because, you know, I woke up this morning and I was sitting here like, why are so many people believing in false narratives? And this is where we get into storytelling. Um, believe it or not, the fact that it is predominant is a big, big thing here on YouTube that investors make more money than business owners. And I've, I've Googled the topic and it's not in Google. It's not the phrase, well, does a business owner or an investor makes more money? It's not even in there because people are not even looking for that information in that context. They're not even looking for it. So I found it very interesting, but it is a false narrative. And uh, when I get um, Savage Finance crank back up, I'm shooting for first part of April to get that started again. Um, I'm gonna talk about it because if you're hit over the head in messaging, messaging is very, very important on the internet. And I kind of understand why so many people want to become investors. Just stick with me here as I walk down this lane with you. If you see a thousand YouTubers who are saying you should invest, you should have a 401k, you should have a Roth, and this message is repeated over and over and over, even though it's not true, even though it's not even applicable to you, you will kind of feel if you're not investing, you would feel stupid. It's like, this is what everyone is saying. This is the thing to do. And I'm not investing. So you're going to feel somewhat less than you're going to feel in incompetent. You're going to feel that, hey, you're missing the boat because everybody's investing. Everyone has an M1 finance. Everyone has a Roth IRA. Everyone's in an index fund. Everyone's in an ETF. Everyone's in a REIT, a dividend paying REIT. And you're like, I'm missing the boat. I am missing the boat. Even though this narrative is a false narrative on this channel, I have shown you through accurate data, because when I feel that some of my best work was when I crunched the income of Americans. When I went to the agricultural sector, when I went to the state income, federal employees sector, and I mapped out their incomes to come to the conclusion that 80% of America makes less than $35,000 a year. And there's 129 million people who have full-time jobs and there's 34 million who have part-time jobs. So everyone that's in that 34 million uh, part-time jobs, they make less than 35,000. They make less than 35,000. So through dedicated analysis and showing you, I'm giving you the foundational aspects to come up with better conclusions because Let's just kind of stick a pin in this right here. 80% of Americans make less than $35,000 a year. What does that mean in the grand term of investing? 80% of Americans do not have adequate income. They do have money that they can invest, but they don't have adequate income to make proper investments. Richard Fain, who is, I don't know what's going on with Richard. Richard was putting out one kind of video. Now he's putting out videos that I actually like. He actually put out a video talking about why you shouldn't finance a car. I put that video out two years ago on Savage Finance. And you know, he's putting out a lot of videos that talk about why you shouldn't finance a car, why you shouldn't be in debt. And this is and the antithesis of the earlier content that Richard was putting out. I don't know where Richard is, but I like his content now because one of the things that 
you know, he put out a video the other day that was very truthful. The title was 100% clickbait. It was talking about how to achieve financial freedom in 10 years. And that video didn't talk about achieving finance. In the video, he even talks about him, him, it took him 20 years to achieve financial freedom himself. So it was real interesting. But he said something that was key. For you to achieve financial independence in 10 years, you're going to need to invest $56,000 a year. And I was like, I kind of like this one, Richard, because you're telling the truth because this is the reality. You know, I don't know where Richard is because like I said, his recent comment, his recent content is more honest and it's truthful because that's what you're going to need. And you only need to get an 8% return consistently for those 10 years to achieve, uh, because what he did was he took your income of 48,000 and how much money would you need to have in investments to throw off passive income of $48,000 a year, which was about 800,000. You know, it really depends on where your money is because if you put your money in dividend stock, you can get a, you can get 30,000 per million or close to 50,000 per million, depending upon how your dividend stock portfolio is constructed. So there are certain uh, investment assets that bring more dividend income than others. But one of the things in when you're putting together a dividend uh, income portfolio, and one of the things you have to look at is, you know, there are some companies that have a high yield, but the company's balance sheet is trash. So that's a sign that at some point in the future, they're going to cut their dividend. But I look at this and I've like, you know, it's, it's kind of like a personal mission because I feel if you guys have the truth, you will make better decisions. And this is why I don't make um, content that will trigger the YouTube algorithm. I've had a few videos trigger the YouTube algorithm, but once again, I want to be honest with you guys. I want to tell you guys the truth so you can make better decisions. And in Richard's video, he mentioned something that I have been pushing for 12 years. You got to get your income up. I was like, I've been saying that for 12 years. So if you want to achieve financial freedom, you've got to get your income up. Who's been saying that for 12 years? And like I said, I like Richard's, Richard, Richard's recent content because it's more honest, it's more focused, it's more helpful, it's more, you know, but this is one of the greatest false narratives there is because there's a whole industry built on getting you to invest. Now, we're about to go somewhere a little bit left here. Let's say you have an investment fund of 2.5 million. You got a brokerage account with 2.5 million and it's a managed brokerage account. Managed, meaning they have a management fee of one to three percent. Do you know that that management fee of one to three percent can take reduce your gains by 50 percent? So this is why there's all of these fee free. I think M1 Finance is a fee free investment platform. I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but is so many things that you have to know about investing. It's not only enough to know where to put your money and what asset to put your money in, but you need to know what are the fees for the company that is managing the asset for you. That is huge. One to 3% management fees can reduce your returns by 50%, 50%. So, there's a whole bunch of things and there's a whole industry built upon investing because those management fees for Wall Street and the brokerage accounts represent billions of dollars. They represent billions of dollars. And I understand why Wall Street is pushing this false narrative because they make money. Uh, there was this movie, I think it was uh, something about uh, Watergate and it was deep throat and he said follow the money 
And in any case that you have a false narrative, follow the money. So you and virtually everyone on YouTube has a topical understanding of investing, a topical understanding. You mean, you know that you should invest, you know that you should put money away, but you don't have a technical understanding of investment. And the technical understanding is knowing about the fees associated with the investment products, knowing about where to put your money, knowing about the yields, knowing about um, a tax, a, a taxable brokerage account versus a non-taxable brokerage account. Uh, like me, I've not been able to put Roth money in the Roth IRA for like the last 20 years because I make too much money. So it's little things like that that represent the potential outcome of your investments that, you know, people are here at this topical level and they understand the mechanics of investing. They understand that they should be investing. They understand that they should have a Roth RA. They understand that they should have a 401k. They have a topical understanding, but when it gets down to the mechanics and the nuts and bolts, this is where it falls apart. Because one of the things that I found in this false narrative of investing is I dug deep. I spent hours and hours and hours in researching this. And the typical 60 year old has a brokerage account of about 250. And this is a person who's been investing in the market for decades. Now, why is their investment portfolio only 250? Let's go back to 80% of Americans only make 35,000. Once again, you make $35,000 a year. You can invest money. You can put money in a Roth. You can put money in a 401k, but you cannot put adequate amounts of money in these investment vehicles that's going to yield you a livable because um, if you had $250,000 in dividend stock, that would get you about 800 bucks a month. I'm assuming it. Cause like I said, my numbers are not <clears throat> spot on cause I'm not looking at it. So correct me if I'm in, wrong, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but 250 will get you about eight, eight, seven, 700, to um, maybe, uh, me, let's see, I think 250 would get you about 1200. I'm not really sure because you know it's all over the place because it really depends on what you invest your money in, and that's going to determine the out potential yield. But let's say you got 250 and you're getting the you know, wherever, let's say you got it in. Um, stock and you're getting an 8% return. 8% of 250 is like 8,000 per every 100,000. So that's 16, that's $20,000 a year that you're getting from your 250 um, portfolio. And that ain't enough money to live on. So what we see and what we have is a failure to do the deep analysis that is required to put together. Like one of the things uh, I like, I, I watch a lot of financial YouTubers and let me go ahead and say this. If you're watching a financial YouTuber who has a subscriber base of 800 or a million subscribers or a million subscribers, I can personally tell you that these financial YouTubers like one, I estimate his YouTube income to be at 500,000 per year, which is quite substantial, which allows them to like, hey, you know, it's like, they'll just like, hey, I put 100,000 over here. When you're making over 100K, because let's say if you're doing 500,000 a year, that means you're making close to 100K every two months. So, it's a different reality for these financial YouTubers that I feel it gets lost upon them because uh, one of the reasons that I have changed my approach here at the Institute of Economic Thought is I want to talk to you where you are. I don't want to talk to you where I'm at. 
because if you've noticed, because I, I think it's been really well received because once again, I'm not showing any more receipts and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And I understand where you are and that allows me to communicate with you where you are versus communicating from the top down. And what do I mean about that? The top down is if I was tone deaf or I was completely obtuse, I would be making these videos for the top 10% because that would be the people that can apply the advice if I was putting out that type of content. But since I know that 80% of Americans, a lot of you people who are watching this channel, you don't make a lot of money. You're smart, you're hardworking, you're doing what things you need to do, but you don't make a lot of money. So for me to make a video talking about, hey, hey guys, how to invest and become financially free in 10 years would be disingenuous because I would know that 90% of you do not have the, and once again, you're smart, you're hardworking, many of you have college degrees, you're doing, you've done everything that society has told you to be successful. So it isn't like you're not trying, but I feel that if I was to make that type of content and once again, because of the false narrative of investing, I feel that's been put out by the wall street machine that if I made that type of content, you guys wouldn't beat me up. You would be like, Hey, okay, this is what I need to do. Glenda said this, and you, you would try to do whatever I put out to the best of your knowledge. You wouldn't beat me up because you would be oblivious to the reality that's driven by this false narrative. Cause the false narrative, I want you to think of the false narrative as a blanket and the truth is a bed. When you walk in your bedroom and you see the blanket on the bed, what do you see? You see the blanket. You don't see the bed. You know, there's a bed under there, but you don't see it. And that's what I feel that the power of these false narratives do. They're a blanket. They're a covering. You, 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 you could kind of sort of know that there's more under the blanket, but you don't see it. All you see is the blanket. That's all you see. And with the power of the false narrative, it is incredibly powerful. Now let's go ahead and talk about why I'm not doing receipts anymore. And you know, this is, I will say that I was misguided in my attempt to be 110% transparent. What I didn't understand and the car rental business helped me tremendously with this tremendously. I will tell you, I would show up and I will show up in the Porsche. I will show up in the BMW to rent someone and use Mercedes or in, I would kind of see their eyes twitch a little bit. It's like, Oh, you're driving that. And these were people who were extremely poor. So what I was doing was saying like, Hey, I can take a financial hit if you don't pay me because I ran into a lot of problems who saw me people who rented my cars, who saw me driving the Porsche. And I have a friend who I consider to be one of the smartest people on the planet and he's quite rich. And he downplays his wealth because we were having lunch one day and he told me, so if people knew my true financial wealth, it would inhibit me from making deals. And I get that. Now at one point I was just like, Hey, I'm just going to show receipts. I'm just going to put stuff on YouTube. I'm going to show the Porsche. I'm going to show the car title. I'm going to put up ATM receipts. I'm going to pull up my bank account. Yeah. I'm going to be hundred percent transparent. And it backfired on me. This is one of the reasons that I have so many haters. And once again, I have noticed since I have come with a more earthy approach, I have less haters on this channel, like way less. Like I may have to remove a dissenting comment once a week or once every two weeks on this channel. So this is telling me that I'm moving in the right direction because once again, it wasn't my intent to brag. It wasn't my intent to boast it. My intent was to show the power of creating a business and the things it would allow you to do. That was my intent, which completely got lost 
because I literally, once again, uh, the uh, corporate game. I've got some people over there. Whenever I talk about the things I have done in the, in the manner of business, oh, you bragging, you bragging, you bragging. And I'm like, why are you here? Once again, in the comments, please put, why are these people here? Because I have a situation in me, like if someone is putting out content I don't like, I don't watch it. If someone is putting out a content that I disagree with, I don't watch it. But for some reason, these people are addicted to my content. And once again, now shout out to the nerd tribe, shout out to the people who support this channel with their well-constructed comments. I actually love, I, like I wake up every day and one of the first things I do is go to this channel to read the comments because they're so good. I really appreciate that. And what I'm, what I'm finding out with this message of me coming from a more earthy, practical perspective and not coming to, because once again, and intellectually, I know that most people in America cannot buy a Porsche. Intellectually, I know that. But on a esoteric and subliminal message, messaging uh, protocols, I didn't understand what that stuff was doing. Because when we get to the social lower economic class and we get to mental illness, there's a proponents. Um, Jordan Peterson, which a lot of people don't like, said that 15% of the population is intellectually incapable of doing higher work functions. So 15% of the population is just screwed. They're going to be our janitors. They're going to be our cleaners and stuff like that, right? So once I had a greater understanding, because this is a journey, this is a 13-year journey of me creating YouTube content and understanding you the audience and the more that I understand the audience the better content that I create because you know um, someone said I forget I forget what the comment was but it was like these conspiracy theories just crack me up because I have people who are leaving comments on my YouTube channel as if they live with me and they know the intricate details of my life. I, I was having this conversation with my girlfriend at dinner the other night. And um, she says something. And she's like, because she knows about the October incident, that's what we'll call it. And she's like, and, you know, she kind of keeps up with what I'm doing and stuff. And she says, if they saw me, they would shit their bricks. You know, and she's not a conceited person. She's very pretty. She's very pretty, very sexy. And she's like, if they saw me, and once again, I kind of flirted with showing her, but over dinner, I said, I would never ever show you on my YouTube channel because they would harass the shit out of you. Not the nerd tribe. You guys would be like, all right, Glenda, that's cool. That's nice. You got a nice little girlfriend. No, the, this, this population of dissenters, the haters, they would harass the shit out of her because she has social media. They would harass the shit out of her because... Once again, I don't understand why these people are even here because they don't like the con. Well, I don't even know if they, cause that, that one person who was watching the video that told me he was watching all of the videos. So what I feel, and you can correct me in the comments is I put out content that no one on YouTube is putting out. I put out honest, focused, truth-based content and I feel that is one of the reasons that they're like, I don't like that Glendon Cameron, but damn it, he tells the truth. And I feel that even though they don't like me, they respect me. And I feel that that paradigm drives them crazy because it's like, I don't like this dude. I feel he's bragging. I feel he's boasting. I don't like him. But damn it, I respect this motherfucker. And I feel that's creating a mental meltdown for these because literally um, it's not normal behavior to go out. I've had people leave 50 comments across all my channels. They would just go for video and leave. And I'm just like, this is not a person who is mentally healthy. It can't be because a mentally healthy person, if I put up something that they don't like, they're like, eh, I don't like that. I'm not going to watch this guy. Cool. But 
once again, the false narrative of investing, and let's talk about that, I feel is driven by Wall Street because it puts money in their pocket. It puts billions in their pocket. So why tell you the truth? And someone left um, a really, the real estate trapper, he left this comment. I really dig that brother. He left this comment. The people who were talking about assets or liability were business owners selling people something that they couldn't achieve. Uh, I feel the real estate trap is a really smart guy because we are pretty much have similar opinions about similar things. He did a video talking about investing and talking about, once again, a business owner. As a business owner, you make more and more money and a business owner gives you the power to become a better investor. So once again, we, you know, he's my brother from another mother. We, we have similar thought processes on many, many different things. And once again, if you look at who's making all of this money, once again, going back to Deep Throat and Watergate, follow the money. Why all these financial YouTubers are pushing you to invest? They get affiliate marketing deals. They get brand deals. They, they make so much money by pushing this false narrative. Because let's say you like, let's say YouTuber X is a financial YouTuber and he talks about dividend investing and his channel starts to take off. And then a company that does dividend investing is like, Hey, Andre, Andre Jack, we will pay you $50 for every person that signs up with our brokerage account, just $50. And Andre is sending a thousand people to this brokerage account every month, which is $50,000 a month. So when you start to look at how much money they're making, like these crypto rug pulls, like I have literally seen people who were talking about one type of content switch to crypto. Alex Becker, he got on the crypto tape real hard, really, really hard. And I saw this other guy, uh, his name is Jesse. I was supposed to interview him and his channel took off when he started talking about auto cake and these uh, helium and these other cryptos that you can stake and make passive income off of blew up, just blew up. But Jesse seems like a good dude. I don't think that he's pimping out his YouTube channel, but I do know for a fact that many financial YouTubers are desperately pimping out their channels, dramatically pimping out their channels. They are, doing these things. And one of the things that you have to understand when someone is pushing a false narrative and it's being pushed really hard, I, I'll, I'll give you another one. And this is kind of going to be a detour. Uh, the sugar baby protocols, the sugar baby, there was girl after girl after girl was girl. You can be fat girl. You can be this, Girl, you don't even have to meet them and you can still get money out of these men. This was pushed. I mean, there, there's a, go ahead and look up sugar baby tips on YouTube and you will see girl after girl. You don't have to meet them. You don't have to have sex with them. You can be fat and you can still get this money. Now, as someone who has done astute sugar baby research, I know that that shit ain't true. It ain't even close to true. But once again, these female YouTubers on YouTube put out these videos and these videos get mad, mad views. So they're putting out videos that get a lot of views, which means that they get a bigger YouTube paycheck. So any way you look at it, when someone's putting out a false narrative, look at the money. Like I'm about to say something. If I had kept my experiences with the car rental business to myself, if I had kept it to myself, and I was like, man, this is a total shit show, right? I could have created a course and I could have pushed a false narrative and I could have made a lot of money. I was like, hey, yeah, you want to rent your cars on a hire car? And then in my course, I would downplay the, 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 the negative stuff like, oh, people keeping your car, people not paying you. I would just downplay that and just, I could have made, I, I could have did a complete rug pull, complete rug pull because the narrative on YouTube is, 
renting cars is quite lucrative. And there's another guy, uh, Lucky, my automotive finance, and he was doing videos that were not getting a lot of views. He was talking about people are leaving Turo in droves. Because <laughs> he was going against the false embedded narrative. And he will say, you know, a lot of people were leaving Toro. A lot of people were selling their cars. They weren't making money. And, you know, he was telling the truth. And I've noticed that when someone tells the truth that is positioned against the false narrative, they don't do well. And I'm going to tell you why. Messaging. Messaging is so important on YouTube. Messaging is critical. Messaging is, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that I personally know. And if I had, if I didn't have ethics, I do have ethics. I'm not going to lie to you to get your money. I'm not going to make stuff up to get your money. I have ethics. I have a fiduciary duty to you, my viewers and potential customers to tell you the truth. And if I didn't have these ethics, I could be making a million a month from YouTube. Easy. Million a month from YouTube. Easy. Because when you join the false narrative collective, like if I did Savage Finance and I was talking about, hey guys, the best thing you can do is start a dividend a stock portfolio. Let me show you my $50,000 dividend stock portfolio and go ahead and put up what I'm doing. And this will induce many of you to go out and start investing in dividend stock. And then I could have a $50,000 dividend stock portfolio. And then once my channel starts to take traction, I can have like maybe four or five brand deals where I could be making 50 to 100K a month in referrals to this brokerage account. Uh, Richard, Richard makes a lot of money from Weeble. That's why he's like, go get this free money, get this free stock. For everyone that signs up to Weeble, I don't know, because actually I have signed up for Weeble, but I never really pushed it. So I don't know what the payout is, but I do know that if you position the financial channel and you get some traction, you can make stupid money, stupid money from affiliates and brand deals. I'm talking, I know YouTubers who make 2 million a month from brand deals. Their YouTube incomes may be like 100,000, but the real money is their brand deals and affiliate, market, and affiliate, uh, affiliate relationships. And that is stupid money. You know why that's stupid money? The average person makes 1.1 to 1.5 million lifetime. It takes the average person 35 to 50 years to make what some of these people are making in one year. That's a heavy inducement. If I didn't have ethics, and this is what's so funny, one of the uh, false narratives is I am a sex trafficker. Uh, from the October thing, there was people talking about he's a sex trafficker. And if you didn't know what sex trafficking is, it's going out and getting some innocent girl, throwing her in the van, getting her hooked on drugs, and pushing her into a life of prostitution. I didn't do that. And I will go a little further. If you're part of BDSM, one of the big things in the BDS community is consent. I have never spanked or done anything to a girl who didn't want it. So once again, if the, these false narratives, it's like he's wanted in Alabama and Georgia and Florida. I mean, it got stupid. It was like, um, well, I was running the Craigslist protocols. All the girls were in Georgia. Where does Alabama come into play? Now, I did have girls who came from out of state who answered the Atlanta Craigslist ad. So that did happen. But yeah, man. And you know what's funny? I'm going to mention a dude who did not get his props. There's a dude on YouTube. I don't think he's making content anymore. His name was Street Money 21 or something. And he would come on. Yeah, man. And he would talk about investing. And he had a really good job. And he had a Mercedes. And he was a financial YouTuber before financial YouTubers. And he was a brother. And he never got his props because he was putting out some stuff. Uh, Dude, astounding, honest, truthful content, and he never got the shine that some of these clowns are getting. I mean, because I'm going to Google him. I'm going to actually see if he's still making content, but I don't think he's making content because he's like, yeah, man, Street Money 21. 
And I, I, I consistently have seen this over and over again in the environment of false narratives. Because once again, and I'm gonna say this again, if you see a false narrative that is being pushed on YouTube, follow the money. I guarantee you at the end of that narrative is not some money. It is a stack of money. It is a stack of money. And I'm talking millions to billions for every false narrative that is being pushed and populated on YouTube. Billions. And one of the things that I see, and this kind of goes back to P.T. Barnum, a sucker's born every minute. So these people who have a topical concept of investing, they don't have deep technical analysis, are being suckered and hoodwinked into these investment protocols and they're paying these investment fees making, because like Wall Street works on the aggregate of numbers. And Wall Street doesn't want one investor. They want thousands or hundreds or millions of investors. Like if you're a brokerage a company and you've got a million investors and you got like say half of them in your fee managed brokerage accounts, you're making billions, billions. So once again, and this is one of the thing, I forget his name, he's an older guy. I think it was Fidelity, the guy that started Fidelity, where he started creating these fee-free brokerage accounts. I think it's Fidelity, because he's an old guy. And um, a lot of people don't understand how the fees in your investment portfolio dramatically erodes your returns. I mean, it is crazy how much fees of a managed portfolio will reduce your, now if you've got like say you won the lottery, right? And you had 50 million large and you didn't know what to do. It would make sense for you to do a fee managed portfolio because you've got so much money. The fees ain't gonna matter. <laughs> it's just not gonna matter. It's not gonna matter. It's like, hey, I just won the lottery. I want to put some money in some investments and you go out and get yourself a fee managed portfolio. That would probably be a good thing for you because they will construct your portfolio in a manner that it will give you the best returns and because you're making so much money, you won't even feel the erosion of, of uh, your portfolio for, from fees because there's so much money. There's so much money. But yeah, you know, it, it's just kind of funny, the power of these false narratives. It is really, really crazy. All right, so once again, I had answered a few questions. I asked a few questions in this video, so if you could indulge me and answer the questions in the comments. I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of this video in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one. All right. So this is to welcome you guys to the Glendon Cameron School, the ultimate source for personal finance and business development and startups. So what we're starting with in the first mode is let's go here. Home economics. Home economics is the foundational educational course of extreme money management. So you can go ahead and get in there and we've got a lot of things coming. And this Sunday at 4 p.m. March 27th, we have our second live webinar. So go ahead, sign up today. The link is below because this is to prep you to be an entrepreneur in the future because one of the biggest issues that we have is people will make money and they'll get locked into a cycle. So there's a lot here that's going to be here. And it is my goal to get this finished before April. So go below, sign up for home economics. It is one of the most important money management courses you will ever take in your life.